Welcome to Starting Right on Sunday Night. I'm Pastor Dwayne Atkinson. As uh, You may not know where we are, but we're at Tired Creek State Park outside Cairo, Georgia, and got this amazing lake in the background. And we're going to be looking at when the lifeguard shows up. It's one of these stories in the Bible that has water in it. So that's the purpose of, of uh, us being here. Uh, but just before we begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for the privilege we have to spend some moments together uh, in your word. And we thank you for helping us start our weeks right uh, on Sunday night with devotions like this. And we pray for the crisis that so many people are in because of the COVID uh, epidemic or pandemic. And uh, we pray that you would comfort the hearts of those who have lost loved ones and those who were highly stressed because of uh, the, uh, the, the, the sickness and the people who have that, that they are close to. And we certainly pray for miracles and we pray that you would keep uh, the people who are treating all of these people, doctors, nurses, orderlies, uh, on and on the list goes. And we pray that you would keep them safe. But by the grace of God, we pray for a solution and a cure in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, what's it like to be in a crisis? We kind of feel that way occasionally in life and sometimes uh, some of us a lot. But in Matthew 14, we're just going to share one verse from the Amplified Bible. And the Bible says there, in the fourth watch, in the Amplified Bible, it's between 3 and a.m. and 6 a.m. Between 3 and 6 in the morning, it's dark, okay? Of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the water. Have you ever thought about the job that lifeguards do? They save lives. Uh, there are people who are having, hopefully, a great time, and then the next thing you know, they're in trouble. The tide comes, and other things take place. And But here comes the, life car, the lifeguard that they need uh, the, to the rescue. And when you look at these, watch, these, these watches in the Bible, the fourth watch of the night, that is a, a military term, a period of time, a military watch or a watch, and it's a period of time when those on duty, they serve. And then at the end of that watch, uh, if it's the watch, if the fourth watch was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., then at the end of that fourth watch, here comes someone else to relieve them, if that's the case. And they have a, the next three-hour period uh, to, to be on guard. As this is partly due to the Roman influence and because they were the ones who were occupying all these lands at this time, the number of watches uh, did increase to four, and, and they were described like this when I was looked this up. The first watch was from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second watch was from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, at midnight, and the third watch was 12 a.m. to 3 a.m., and the fourth watch was 6 p.m. Three, excuse me, 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, when we talk about lifeguards, when you think about the greatest lifeguard, there's a number of things we need to think about. In Matthew 14, 24, New Living Translation, here these disciples are. They're in the middle of this lake in a storm. And uh, that's what the Bible is describing here. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. This particular verse takes a, a place, the setting is the Sea of Galilee, which is also referred to, they have all these different languages, I suppose, that's why it's referred to in so many different uh, names. The Sea of Galilee, I have read, is also uh, referred to as the Sea of Tiberias, the Lake of Gennesaret, Lake Kinneret, and Lake Tiberias, so you have all these names. I looked that up, and it's about 13 miles uh, long from north to south, and 141 feet deep, and it's about the shape of South America, except a, a lot smaller, obviously. So here these disciples are, some of them are seasoned fishermen, and they find themselves in a unique situation. 
uh, uh, they learn some things in this storm. There are things that you learn in the difficulties of life, particularly if you walk with God uh, in faith as you follow Christ. Uh, there'll be some things you can learn that you cannot learn any other way. Uh, and and I, I thought about some things that this, these disciples learned. You can know, first of all, you can know all about storms and still find out there's a storm that you're not prepared for. That's just life itself. Jesus had commanded these disciples to get into the boat. They were in God's will doing exactly what the Lord told them to do. Secondly, they realized you can be in a bunch of places all at the same time. You really can. We think that it's not possible as a human. Well, it is in a certain sense. They were in God's will. They were in this boat. They were in this storm. Uh, and they were in a, a state of uh, great concern. And eventually they, they were in a state of terror. So all of these, they were in all these places at the same time. And, you know, here they were in this storm that was overwhelming to them. And the third thing is this. Just because you know who Jesus is, even if you walk with Jesus, that does not always prevent the storms of life that we bear or have to deal with. They knew Jesus. They were in ministry with Jesus. They were dedicated to Jesus. And they were dedicated to his teachings and his example. And in spite of all of that, the storm, the winds, the heavy waves, they just kept on keeping on. They kept on coming. That's how storms are written in life sometimes. The fourth thing to think about uh, when you get in these storms, the good thing about it is when the lifeguard shows up, things change. And in the storms of life, don't forget the lifeguard especially when you feel you're about to go under. Just like us, the disciples were doing all they could do within their power. I would imagine they were managing the oars, managing sails, uh, if the boat had all these, and, and trying to keep the boat pointed into the wind. That's the, the, the best way to be in a storm like in, a, in a boat. And there was something else they found out they could do. They could panic. How good are you at panicking? And, and yet there is hope when you remember your lifeguard. And finally, this is what they learned in this storm. They found out that there was one lifeguard that was not like any other lifeguard. Thank the Lord for all the people who helped people save lives. But this particular lifeguard came to them walking on the water and may you and i remember when the storms of life are against us and when help seems so far away even seem or look impossible remember that jesus your lifeguard if you're a child of god and he really does walk on water and the good news is the lord knew where these disciples were all the time. They didn't know where he was all the time, but he knew where they were. And he came to them uh, in the middle of this lake, apparently, far away from any land, in the middle of this dark, uh, stormy circumstance. And he came right to where they were. And the Lord cares for you. And when you and I are confronted with these type of storms in life, it may not be on a lake, but the storms are just as real, whether they're on a lake or on land or wherever they may be. Uh, when you get that, uh, that sinking and uncertain kind of feeling, may, we, may you and I remember that our lifeguard walks on water. You know, the Lord cares for you, and he is concerned about you, interested in the circumstances of your life. How do you know that? It's because he sends a word just like this one, just for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. And we thank you for these stories in the Bible. 
and particularly for the ones that ended on a happy note like this one did. Everything did turn out fine when it was all said and done. And Lord, may we put our hope, our trust in you and serve you in this life. Looking forward to the life to come. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'm Pastor Dwayne Atkinson of Cairo Church of God in Cairo, Georgia. So glad you've joined us. Have a blessed rest of the week. In Jesus' name.